Grace and peace be yours from God our Sovereign, and from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ, and from the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today we celebrate the baptism of Jesus. There are two key themes in Mark's baptism story. One is the Spirit's descent upon him. When we see that, and Jesus, just as he was coming up out of the water, we saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. The other theme that is prominent in Mark's baptismal story is the voice from heaven that Jesus alone hears as he comes up out of the water. The voice proclaims, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. <clears throat> it helps one to interpret the text. If you are aware of the Hebrew <laughs> scriptures that form the background for the New Testament story. And when it comes to Mark's account of the baptism of Jesus, most of us do not know them well. In fact, most Christians are probably more informed from later Christian art of the 2nd, 3rd, and 4th century than they are from the early Hebrew scripture texts which form the basis of Mark's story. So that when talking about the baptism of Jesus, most imagine a rather pastoral scene, quiet and picturesque, and in so doing, they miss the whole intent and point of Mark's rather brief account. When we let art inform us, late Christian art inform us of Mark's baptism narrative, <coughs> we miss the one word that really gives it substance and meaning. That one word that gives us the Hebraic background with which to read and interpret Mark's Gospel. And that one word is torn. Close your eyes for a moment. Close your eyes and get rid of that Sunday school picture of Jesus standing in the Jordan River with the sun being shining down on him and the dove floating down from the sky above. Close your eyes and reimagine the text. Instead of a nice clear day with the sun streaming through the clouds, imagine a very dark, stormy sky with the sounds of thunder rolling around in the background. And suddenly, a bolt of lightning streaks down from the skies. Can you see it? Can you feel its power? Mark did. And Mark says that Jesus saw the heavens torn apart. Why is that the key word? Because Mark is using that word to link Jesus' baptism to the prophet Isaiah's prayer in Isaiah 64. Where the prophet cries out, Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down so that the mountains would quake at your presence as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil to make your name known to your adversaries so that the nations might tremble at your presence. That's not an image of peace and tranquility. That's a 
radical image of the intervention of God intruding into our world and overturning the apple cart. Everything goes topsy-turvy. Far from tranquility. That image that Mark chose to use for the baptism of Jesus weeks of power and might in fact when the Apostle Paul talks about the power of the Holy Spirit the Greek word that he uses is dynamis it's the same word that we get our word dynamite from. We will return to this a little later. But let's take a second and look at the second theme embedded in Mark's story of Jesus' baptism. That is the voice from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. Again, most Christians remain ignorant of the Hebrew scriptures that give voice to this. In fact, most Christians today read that text as if it were some kind of affirmation of Jesus' divinity. But it's not about that. <coughs> It's not about Jesus being part of the Godhead. That verse is a joining together of two Old Testament themes, neither of which speak of divinity. The first Old Testament theme is from the Psalms. I have set my king on Zion, my holy hill. And I will tell you of the decree of the Lord. He said to me, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. That's not a special word for Jesus. It's a coronation psalm. And every king that ascended to the throne of David would have that psalm read as he ascended the throne. And in spite of the fact that centuries after it was written, Christians would apply the text to Jesus, it still has nothing to do with divinity. At best, it is a psalm that suggests that God's favor rests upon this new king ascending to the throne of David. And God has something to say about what that kingship should be like. And that's the second passage that is captured from the Hebrew Scriptures. It comes from the Suffering Servant poem of Isaiah 42, where the triumphalistic and militaristic images of kingship are modified by the allusion to the Suffering Servant found in Isaiah. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights, my beloved. I have put my spirit upon him, and he will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry out or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. God's distributive justice. It is these two Old Testament themes that are joined together in Mark's brief baptismal story of Jesus understood correctly, it paints a very different picture than that pastoral scene of Jesus.
is standing in the Jordan with the sunbeam landing upon him. Now the image, far from that picturesque pastoral scene, we now see Jesus infused with the power of the Spirit. Infused with that power so that he might make mountains quake and water to boil and kindle the fire. This is a Jesus empowered to take on the powers and principalities of this world. This is a Jesus endowed with a spirit ready to engage the world, not with militaristic might, but with the humble passion for God's justice that was first spoken of in the suffering servant. This is not about Jesus' divinity. It's about his vocation. One might say that Jesus' baptism was God's call to Jesus to be fully human, to be what God created all of us to be. And in that sense, Jesus is the beloved Son. Jesus is the one in whom we see the fullness of God's Holy Spirit indwelling. Thus, the voice from heaven confirming his sonship and his vocation. But here's the point, folks. You and I have also been baptized into Christ. You and I have also had the power of the Holy Spirit poured out upon us. We have been clothed with power on high to be, and we have been declared to be, beloved sons and daughters of our Creator God.